And this is part three of lesson 5.2, or section 5.2 in your handout, um, and also 5.2 in your textbook. The heading is multiplying and dividing ra radical expression, but what we're doing today is very specific. We are rationalizing binomial denominators. What we were rationalizing last week were monomial denominators. So to begin with, as a warm-up, just to remind us how would we simplify this, we would take 4 over root 6 and multiply the top and the bottom of this expression by root 6. This is the rule that we use when you have a monomial radical that you want to rationalize. And by the way, even if it were over, doesn't matter, 7 root 6, you would still only multiply top and bottom by root 6. You don't, you don't include the coefficient. And what do we get? Well, on the top, you get 4 root 6. And on the bottom, root 6 times root 6 is 6. Then, as is often the case, we can take the coefficients that result and simplify them. 4 over 3 is 2 thirds. So simplifying 4 over root 6 gives 2 root 6 over 3. Capiche? OK. So you need to multiply the numerator and denominator by root 6. And this is because it's a monomial denominator. If it's a binomial, which means two terms, then we need to multiply the top and the bottom by what is called the conjugate of the bottom. Okay, now what is a conjugate? Well, I'll tell you right now, just forgetting about radicals, a plus b and a minus b are conjugates. These are conjugates. They're conjugates of each other. a plus b is the conjugate of a minus b. a minus b is the conjugate of a plus b. These are conjugates. Let's try something. And you don't have to write this down. We can just kind of look up here and you can follow my work. If I were to take these two things and multiply them, what I get? In terms of FOIL, you know, that acronym that you're taught probably back in grade 8 or 9, first would be x times x which is x squared. Last would be 3 times negative 3, which is minus 9. And my outer would be negative 3x, and my inner would be positive 3x. And negative 3x and positive 3x reduce to 0. So I get x squared minus 9. If I were to do that here, and I'm going to switch the order of these. Let's go a minus b times a plus b, you know, first, outer, inner, last. I would get a squared. I would get minus a b, uh, pardon me, minus b squared. And my outer would be plus a b, and my inner would be minus a b. And the result is the outer and inner cancel. And I hope you can kind of convince yourself that that's always going to happen when you multiply conjugates. And we have a special name for this result, whether it's this or this. This is called a difference of squares. And normally, well, no, not normally, until you got to grade say 10 and learned about factoring in detail, normally what you would be doing all the time is this. You would be going from here to there. You'd multiply stuff out. But then we learned how to factor. And we learned to recognize that a difference of squares factors into those two conjugates. But I don't know that you've ever been told they're called conjugates. Maybe? It's a new word? OK. OK, so what? We'll come back to that. An example of two conjugates that contain radicals are these two. 
Like, take a look at them and see if it fits the mold of x plus 3, x minus 3, or a plus b, a minus b. Okay. So these are two conjugates. In the space below, simplify the product of those two. And by the way, um, if you look at the question here, it says the product of 4 root x minus root 3 and its conjugate. I don't want you to think there's any special, anything special about this. They're conjugates of each other. Okay. But we're going to do this. So we're going to do the first, outer, inner, and last. Well, my first is 4 root 6 times 4 root 6. And I know I mentioned last week that some of you are going to maybe try to skip steps and you will make mistakes. I think this is where it starts to happen. Okay. 4 root 6 times 4 root 6 is 16 times 6. I want you to think carefully about that. If you need to, then by all means do that. I multiply the coefficients to get 16. I multiply the radicands to get 36, which means the radical is root 36. And then you can say 6. Um, I put 16 times 6 because I said 4 times 4 is 16. And I know root 6 times root 6 is 6. What is my last? My last is negative 1 times root 3, and it might help some of you to squeak a 1 in there. Negative 1 root 3 times positive 1 root 3. Well, negative 1 times 1 is 1, and root 3 times root 3 is negative 3. What's my outer? Well, my outer is the product of this and this, which would be 4 root 18. Can we simplify root 18? Can you simplify root 18? Yeah. Are we going to? Why are we not going to? Right, they're going to cancel. My inner is going to be the product of this and this, which is negative 4 root 18. Just, just like these two. Where am I? Just like these two. We get the first and the last and the outer and inner cancel. And I like to say, it sounds kind of weird, but when you're multiplying conjugates, there's no need to foil. You fla. That's all you do. You do first and last, and that will do the trick. So what we're left with is 16 times 6, which is 96, minus 3. Now think about this for a second just before we write 93 as an answer, I told you that we call this a difference of squares. Right? When we look at our example here, this number 96 was that. We squared the first thing. First is going to be 4 root 6 times 4 root 6. And then this one was squaring... The second thing, just think very clearly about this. If you square a square root, the square roots go away. So what happens is we get a rational result. We get 93. Well, I, I'm going to put the minus right in the middle. We get 93, which is a rational number. Why is it a rational number? Because when we multiply conjugates together, we get a difference of squares, and squares do not contain radicals. We, if we started off with radicals, they won't have radicals later. So what do you notice about the product of two irrational conjugates? The product is rational. And if our job is to rationalize a denominator, then we can multiply the bottom of the expression by the conjugate of that denominator, and we will rationalize it. Of course, you're going to have to multiply the numerator by that same expression. And the problems, were th that's the new math. That's the new stuff we've learned today. The problems now just become a matter of being very careful, organized, thoughtful, 
on paper and in your head so you don't make mistakes or you minimize them. So how do we rationalize 5 over 2 plus root 3? Well, if the denominator were, I, I misspoke there. How do we rationalize the denominator? And I think I made this mistake on Friday. We can't rationalize this whole expression because we're going to end up with something that has radicals somewhere. We're trying to rationalize the denominator. If that denominator were a monomial, we would just multiply the top and the bottom by the radical. But it's a binomial, so we multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. So since it's 2 plus root 3, we're going to multiply top and bottom by 2 minus root 3. What do we get on the top? I'll get 5 times 2 minus root 3, and I want to pause here and explain. This is going to be very important when we deal with what are called rational expressions. It's math dealing with fractions. And, and now I don't want to talk about radicals. I want to talk about fractions and simplifying fractions. We're not going to multiply that 5 through. Do you remember in a couple of the questions we did earlier? I'm going to go back to a question that was asked about here. Do you remember how we could take this expression from this point and factor a 3 out and it canceled? And then later on, we got to, we got to this expression and we could factor a 2 out and the 2's canceled? Okay. Leaving things in factored form is good just in case things cancel later on. So my point is, why would we multiply that 5 in? Why would we multiply that 5 in when later on we might want to factor it out to cancel? I don't think it's going to cancel, to be honest. But let's leave it out there anyway. Don't hide the factor. On the bottom, what do we get? We get 4 minus 3. And I want everybody to think about that. Because it's very easy to make a mistake here. It's very easy to write something like 4 minus 9 or 2 minus 3. The first part of the conjugate is not a radical. So when we square that, or when we go 2 times 2, you get 4. You multiply the numbers. The second part, though, the l in the fl is a radical times a radical. It's root 3 times root 3. It's minus, but, and root 3 times root 3 is 3. So sometimes the number stays the same and the radical goes away if there's a radical. Sometimes if there's no radical, the number just gets squared. Well, this is great because now we have an answer. That's it. This is our answer because 4 minus 3 is 1. So it turns out had we multiplied that 5 in, we would have had 10 minus 5 root 3. And it turns out that would have been okay because nothing canceled anyway. Textbooks and myself tend to differ on answers sometimes. I think this is the better answer even though that 5 doesn't cancel. I, I do. I think things just... Maybe it's because I just want you to get used to the idea of leaving things in factored form because factor is better, always, in terms of fractions. If you wrote this or you look in the back of a textbook or at an answer key and that's what you see, that's fine too. Any questions with A? 12z over root 8z minus 3. I want you to notice, I wish there was a way to type this out, but that 8z, the entire 8z is under the radical sign. I wish there was a, a way for us to have that kind of hanging edge on the square root to really make it clear where it ends. And then minus 3. There's two issues here that we have to overcome. One root 8 can be simplified. 
two, we've got radicals in the denominator. I'm not sure it really matters at this point whether we should simplify root 8 right now. I'm going to go ahead and leave it alone and multiply the numerator and denominator. Multiply the numerator by root of 8z plus 3 and multiply the denominator by the root of 8z minus 3. All right, what do we get? On the top, 12z times root of 8z plus 3. We leave the top in factored form. This is going to be huge in the rational expressions unit. When you introduce new factors, usually it's the numerator where we leave things in factored form. The denominator, I'm going to get 8z minus 9. I knew I wrote something wrong because I could see a couple of you looking around. That minus on the bottom there in green should have been a plus. Again, take an eyeball. Heck, take two eyeballs and look at the bottom and make sure you understand how that becomes 8z minus 9. The root 8z times root 8z simply gives me 8z, and then the minus 3 times the minus 3 gives me 9. So it's interesting because I could have spent time simplifying the root 8 on the bottom, but it doesn't matter on the bottom, does it? Because I end up with 8z minus 9. However, I really should simplify the root 8. And, and here's something you'll hear me say a lot in the rational expressions unit later on. Even though it doesn't lead anywhere, we should simplify root 8. It doesn't make things really simpler, but we should do it anyway. So root 8 is root 4, root 2. I don't know why I'm working backwards here. Root 8 is root 4, root 2, which is 2 root 2. So this becomes 12z times 2 root 2z plus 3 all over 8z minus 9. So the fact that that root 8 becomes root 2 root 2 is a bit of an issue because if it doesn't lead anywhere and it doesn't, then this might be the answer that's in the back of a textbook. Or this might be, but we are done. Now, I have a couple of questions for you. The, the radicals are out of the denominator. That's one item checked off of our list. The root 8 is simplified. There are no more radicals to simplify. Is there anything that we can cancel? For example, Twelve over eight reduces down. Am I allowed to reduce twelve over eight down? No. Because if I did, I would be thinking of the number four, wouldn't I? Is four a factor of the top? No, there's no well, four is a factor of the top, I guess. Is four a factor of the bottom? No. I can't write the bottom here as four times the rest of the bottom. So 4 is not a factor of the bottom. It's that minus sign here that's messing things up for factoring. So that's it. We're done. Any questions with that example? All right. Notice where the radical sign ends in example 3. So what we have is 12 over root 6, p minus 3. Doesn't that look nicer? Like, doesn't that convey more information to you about what's going on here? You don't have to, you know, if, you're, if your eyes are a little out of focus, you don't have to really, really get in there and see. It's the root 6 that's the coefficient, and p is the variable. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the bottom which would be the square root of 6 multiplied by p plus 3. And the bottom, same thing, square root of 6 multiplied by p plus 3.
Leave the top alone. Uh, what I mean by that is don't multiply things out. The bottom, they're two conjugates, so we can do the fla thing, or just square the first. Just stop and think about that. That root 6 times p times root 6 times p is 6p squared, or the square of root 6 times p is 6p squared minus the square of 3, which is 9, or minus 3 times 3. Am I done? Okay, well, none of the radicals can be simplified. There's no radicals in the denominator. Is there anything else I can do? Right. Perfect. Factor a 3 out of the bottom and then cancel a 3 out of the 12 on the top. So when we get to the rational expressions unit, and I'm, I'm aware that this is radical expressions we're working on, and I've mentioned rational expressions about 10 times today already. But when we get to that unit, which I believe is the next unit, I'm going to tell you that the first step in anything is factor. You have to factor everything completely all the time. So if, I, if we factor a 3 out of the denominator here, I have 12 times root 6 p plus 3 over, I take a 3 out, and I have 2p squared minus 9, not minus 9, minus 3. Am I allowed to cancel a 3 out of the 3 with a 3 out of the 12? Yes, because this 12, and I'm going to rewrite it. For goodness sake, you don't have to rewrite this, but this 12 is 3 times 4. And then the whole thing is times root 6p plus 3. The bottom is 3 times 2p squared minus 3. Here are my green brackets indicating that the things we can cancel are indeed factors because they're multiplying by all of their surroundings. So when we do that, we are left with 4 multiplied by the square root of 6 times p plus 3 over 2p squared minus 3. Oh. Man, this just never ends, eh? Can I cancel the, the 4 with the 2? Oh, I reeled you in on that one. You cannot cancel the 4 with the 2 because the 2 is not a factor. I kind of sucked you in because I said, oh, look at this, it never ends. It, it did end here. That's it, we're done. Would the 3 on the top, are you saying the 3 on the top should be a minus 3? No, I was thinking it would be like a 1 because you could separate the 3 from it. Like are we talking here, Ashira, about the number on the top or the bottom? The top? I don't think I factored anything on the top. The top was a 12, and I simply multiplied the top and the bottom by root 6 of p plus 3. So when I, and I think I see where your mind went there, when I did this move here, that's what you're thinking, right? But I didn't factor the 3 out of this. I simply factored the 3 out of the 12. And, and I think you can see that if I multiply these two things together, which is what it says, I'm back over here. So me writing the 3 here doesn't pull a 3 out of the other thing. We're back to the concept of factors because there's a multiplication in here, not a plus. If there were a plus, well, it would be a totally different question, and I couldn't factor a 3 out because 3 is not a factor of this. So that's it. We are done here. You cannot do anything with this 4 or this 2. I mean, I've seen some crazy things. Boy, if you start doing that, that's telling me that you really have no concept of fractions and factors. 
You cannot do something like that. You can't just see two numbers somewhere in your work and go, oh, I'm going to cancel them. Liberty. Sure. What we're doing here, so the question is, how do I get from here to here? Yes? Okay. So if I had A plus B times A minus B, and I multiply that out, I get A squared minus AB plus AB minus B squared. Are you fine with that? So you're fine then, I think, with the idea that we don't have to do the outer and inner. Okay. So when I do this one, I have root 6 times p minus 3 and root 6 times p plus 3. And be patient with me, Liberty, and everybody, because there's two ways to think about this, and I want you to think of eventually the one that makes most sense to you. If you FOIL this out, you understand that we do not have to do FOIL, but we can just do the first and the last. Okay. So if you think that way, then you're going to take root 6 times p times root 6 times p. This, it's, it's written, I don't know, this might help you. This actually might make more sense to you. Let me rewrite this. Do you see that p is what we would call a coefficient? So I multiply coefficients by coefficients and get p squared. And root 6 times root 6 is just 6. Have I answered your question then? Okay. The other way you could do it, rather than thinking of foiling, is, is you know, focus your attention here. It's a squared minus b squared. So if I have this minus this, when I square the 3, it becomes 9. When I square root 6, it becomes 6. When I square p, it becomes p squared. But either way, and I think uh, many of you, it won't be that one way is better than the other. They both make sense. Are you okay with that now? Okay. All right. We have one last question. It's a monster of a question. Only because... There are radicals flying around everywhere. And, you know, not to draw attention to my flaws, but you see me make mistakes frequently. I'm not as worried about me making a mistake. It bothers me, but I'm not the one who has to write an exam. You're the one who has to write the exam, right? There's a lot to keep track of here. Right? There's a lot of numbers. There's radicals. There's the concept of conjugates. There's the concept of canceling factors, of simplifying radicals. But you have to start moving. So the first thing I would recommend is make sure that you've written down the question correctly. I always recommend you rewriting the question so you have more space. And we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2 root 6 plus 3 root 5. That's the conjugate of the bottom, which we want to rationalize. So the top is 2 root 6 plus 3 root 5. Double check everything. I look, think it looks good. So the bottom becomes 4 times 6 minus 9 times 5. Roll that around in your head. Don't just write these numbers down unless you understand what it is we're doing to get those numbers. Where's the 4 coming from? Charlie, where am I getting 4 from? Um, the, two, the 2 times the 2. Um. 2 times the 2. And why do I have 6 and not 36? Because the 2 square roots, they cancel. They cannot cancel each other. They become the Right, root 6 times root 6 will give you the 6. And then on the other side, 3 times 3 is 9, and root 5 times root 5 is 5. I, I, would, I would resist the temptation here, everybody, to do this from here. Okay, I, I really would. I, don't, I think 
that it's easy to go, well, I'm just going to take 4 times 6, and that's 24, and then I'm going to take the 9 times the 5. I mean, I know you can do it, but the fewer steps you have, the easier it is to make a mistake, even if you're an excellent student. What do we get on the top? So now I'm going to go back on my word. I said, when you do this, leave the top in factored form so you can see the factors. However, if we multiply out the top, we will get something simpler. There may, in fact, be factors buried in there that we can't see. So we do have to FOIL the top. 3 root 6 times 2 root 6 is 6 times 6. Again, just think about that for a second. My outer will be 3 root 6 times 3 root 5, which is 9 root 30. My inner is 1 root 5 times 2 root 6, which is 2 root 30. And my last will be 1 times 3, which is 3 times 5. I'm going to double check my first outer, inner, last. I would recommend that you do the same thing. 6 times 6, 9 root 30. 2 root 30 and 3 times 5 looks good. So what do we get on the top? We get 36 plus 11 root 30 plus 15. Thirty six plus fifteen is forty one plus eleven root thirty over negative twenty one. He says with a question mark in his voice. I don't like that negative on the bottom. What did I say? 41. Oh, no, it's 51. Thank you. Definitely. Did I say 51? I heard 51 in my brain. How's that? Um, I don't like that negative on the bottom. It just rubs me the wrong way. I'm, not, I'm really not a fan of throwing a negative for a fraction out front of the whole fraction. I'm going to do that here. The reason I don't like it is if I see this in a textbook, usually it's the case that it's very, very close to the fraction line. And you may not even see it. Um, Three ways to write this. This way, this way, which I don't like. Is this right? No. This is, or changing the 51 to a negative and the 11 root 30 to a negative, that would work. By the way, we are done because nothing factors out of the top to cancel with a factor of the 21. But if something did, you wouldn't notice that it did until you foiled out that mess on the top, OK? That's it. <laughs>